Hey there, it's Lauren. Welcome back to Take Action Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about the concept of feature matching and its role in agency evaluation. I talk about some of the top features I look into when getting an evaluation started and more about how I dive into these features throughout the process. Are you ready to dive in? Let's go. If you've completed an AAC evaluation or are looking into completing one, you've likely heard of the term feature matching. It is an evaluation term that essentially means we are looking at the individual needs to support their communication and matching the features of a device to that communication need. There are tons of features to a device, from the icons to the hardware, the carrying capability, the access method, color, organization, and so much more. Today, we are going to break down some of the features into language organization and accessibility. And before we get too far into the episode, I do want to mention that several devices have very similar features. So I don't want you to get too hung up on this concept. But we do talk about it because I need you to know that we can't just give everyone the same device and think it'll work for them. For them. There are times where we really do need to take this feature matching component very seriously to meet the needs of our individual. So we're gonna talk about language organization first. And this is the way that the icons on your system are displayed and how they transition so that you can build novel utterances. Way back in the day, systems used to be phrase-based. So each individual button or icon had its own phrase. And we really moved away from this being the sole structure of a device because it inhibits an individual's ability to really create novel utterances. So today, we mostly see category-based systems and motor planning-based systems. The category-based systems have a set of core words on the home page, but then there are categories that hold your content vocabulary or your fringe vocabulary. And within those folders varies depending on the app of what is the makeup is. There's sometimes core vocabulary also included. When I think about category-based systems, I really think about word power, touch chat with word power, and I think of solo quote to go. Then we have motor planning-based page sets. And this is where the organization is incredibly specific. The buttons appear in the same location every time. And typically, motor planning systems are a little bit faster. There's less selections that need to be taken to get to a specific word. And when I'm thinking of motor planning, I think of the TV Snap motor planning page set, LAMP, and Speak for Yourself. Those are kind of the big ticket ones right now. We want to consider the different language organizations for our students. What makes sense in our brain may not make sense for them. So I was talking to a device rep recently, and they kind of explained the two components of TD Snap because I was talking about the fact that I and I really like the new motor planning app. It makes a lot of sense to me in my brain, uh, where Snap Core to me was more cumbersome. And he went on to say that they really both are completely different in the respect that like one person would really like one and one person would really like the other. So he referred to his kids specifically and saying that. One of them really liked everything neat and organized and in their home and that motor planning page set is really good for her. But his son really um, is active and likes to move around a lot and is, isn't always willing to navigate back to the pages to find the vocabulary he wants. So it's really helpful for him to have it all in one location. So this is going to look different for different kids, which is why it's really important that we do look into it. Next, let's talk a little bit about the accessibility component. This encompasses a lot of things from direct selection to eye gaze, to scanning, key guards, to program, um, programming settings that prevent buttons from repeat selecting or give you time to actually select. When we're looking at access, we do want to start with direct selection. And this is when you use a part of your body to select a location on the device itself. And direct selection is typically the fastest, which is why we often start here. But I do want to note, if, you're, if you already know your individual can't direct select, don't trial it. Don't start with direct selection. You can start with the thing that makes the most sense for them and their motor capabilities. 
We also want to consider a key guard. A key guard goes over top of a device and it has, um, it's basically this thick plastic overlay and has holes for the different locations and gives more support and motor control to those selections. You also have different settings like activate on release or short wait time before selection. And I just want to make a note here that these are not to stop individuals from stimming on a device. I've seen them used the wrong way multiple times. They really should be used to support access to the communication. So we're not stopping their form of access to the communication. We're just supporting them getting access to the communication. And the majority of apps and major apps on the market right now all have a variety of accessibility features that you can look into to fit the needs of your AAC user. So I really do believe that all devices should have these core features. They should have access to core and fringe vocabulary. They should have a keyboard. They should have editing features for appearance to kind of add that identity to the device. They should have the opportunity to add some phrases, quick phrases, and they should have a variety of voice options depending on the client you're working with. If you're working with a young child, you don't want to give them the adult voice unless they specifically choose it themselves. And with that voice option also comes languages. If your individual needs a different language, please find a system that provides that language to them. So we really want to look into feature matching. It's an important step in the eval process. We want to know what does the language system or device have to offer the individual that's going to benefit them. This process does not have to be long and complicated. We don't have to try every single feature. We can use our clinical judgment and say, these are the features that I think will be the most important. Trial them, and then if you're wrong, you can come back and adjust throughout that trial process. But if everything is going well, you can continue to move on through that trial with the distinctions that you have made. So I hope this episode helps to clarify a little bit about feature matching and what that can look like in the eval process and gives you two really great spots to start when you're working on that feature matching component. I will see you next week when we are going to talk all about the first thing I think you should do when you get an AAC.